Hi, first graders. I hope you had a great weekend. Mr. Baker and I were busy outside all weekend working on our new patio for our backyard, and I thought I'd share a little bit about that with you today. First, we had to have some areas marked in our yard so we didn't hit any power lines, but then we were able to use some flags to show the outline of the patio we wanted to build, and that's what you see in this picture here. That was our plan. Before we could dig in the ground, we decided to um, cut through the grass and roll up the grass so we could save that and put it in other areas of our yard. We had a lot of dirt to dig out, so we rented an excavator. And you can see Mr. Baker driving the excavator around the side of the garage there, so we could start digging in the dirt. Even I drove the excavator, and I even got to dig some dirt. This is what it looked like when we finished digging in the dirt. If you think about a ruler, first graders, a ruler is 12 inches long. We dug about 9 inches deep, so almost a ruler deep. Duke thought we were building him a little doggy wading pool, but I still think he'll like the patio when we're finished. To fill in that deep hole in our backyard, we had to shovel wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow of rock. And there's me working hard shoveling some of the rock in our driveway. The rock piles started all the way back by our garage doors. They're open right now, but if those were closed, the rock pile went all the way back to the garage door. This is about midway through the day. We had shoveled a lot of the rock, and this is a picture that I took at the end of the day. We shoveled so much rock first graders. I'll show you what we did with the rock. We dumped the wheelbarrows full of rock into that nine inch deep hole. And a couple of times, every so often, we'd have to use a big machine to press it down. And then we'd add more rock on top of it and spread it around and press it down. Here's a picture of me using that big, heavy piece of machinery, really making sure that the rock is compacted and um, as smooth as it could be in the ground. Once we had filled that area with rock and it was nice and smooth, we were able to start laying pavers. And we used a, a cart called a dolly to carry pavers to, from the driveway to the backyard. And we had to do this very carefully. It takes a long time to make sure that each paver is laid just right and it doesn't wobble when you step on it. As you can see, it made Mr. Baker very tired. His back was a little sore, but he worked super hard and the pavers are looking great. We aren't quite done yet, but I will be sure to show you a picture of our finished patio. We sure do look forward to sitting out on our patio and relaxing for the rest of this nice weather. Let's go on to our morning note. Dear first graders, today is Monday. I hope you enjoyed seeing pictures from our patio project. Today we will continue to talk about time during the math segment of this video. Have a magnificent Monday. Love, Mrs. Baker. Remember to go on Seesaw if you are able to make corrections to this video. Today we're going to be working with time to the half hour on digital clocks. So you are going to find page 607 in your math book. And you are welcome to rip this page out if you want while you're working on it, or you can work on it in your book. But this is what that page should look like. Make your page look like my page. At the bottom, it says Tyler's football practice ends at half past four. Use the clock to show the time. Write the time on the digital clock shown on the phone. And it says to tell a classmate what time is shown on the phone. You can just tell somebody at home what time is shown on the phone. So if it is half past four, it already shows us that 30 minutes on the right side. So on the left side, we need to put the number... I hope you were thinking the number four, because half past four would be 
and that is the time shown on the cell phone on this page. If you turn the page, you should be looking at page 608, and it should look like this. At the top, it says a digital clock can show time to the half hour, can also show time to the half hour. So on the left there, we see an analog clock, and you can visually see that that right side is shaded yellow. So that is the first 30 minutes of the hour, the first half of the hour. On a digital clock, we show that by saying 30 minutes. So you can see that both clocks say 630. And you can write, both of the clocks show half past, go over that light six, or 630. Trace over those numbers now. The next part of the same page says to use the clock to show the time. Tell what time is shown and write the time on the digital clock. So you are going to practice reading those analog clocks and writing them on the digital clock. As you do this, I want you to remember that the red shorter hand is the hour hand and that is the number that will go on the left. And the blue hand, which is longer, is the minute hand. And that number will go on the right. Today, we are telling time to the half hour. So all of the clocks should say 30 on the right. On page 609, you are going to do the exact same thing. More practice reading the analog clocks and writing the time on the digital clocks. Remember, the red shorter hand tells you what the hour is. The blue longer hand tells you what the minutes are, how many minutes there are. Number 11, at the top of the last page for today, it says Mrs. Johnson's class has art at 9.30. It lasts for one hour. What time does art class end? To solve this first graders, you are going to use the addition number sentence 9 plus 1 because you are adding one hour to the hours you already have, which is 9. So you can solve that and then write the time on the clock. Remember, the minutes will not change, only the hours. So if the class starts at 9.30, then the time the class ends should have 30 minutes as well. Number 12 says Aiden's school choir stopped singing at half past three. They sang for two hours. What time did they start singing? To figure out the hour that they started singing in first graders, you are going to make a subtraction sentence. Three minus two. Three is the time that they ended, or half past three, but we need to find out what the hour was two hours before that. So three minus two equals, hopefully you've solved for the hour of this, the number that goes on the left side of that digital clock, I just want to remind you that we are still working with the half hours. So the minutes for your answer should say 30. Finally, at the bottom of this page, it says Chase tells his friends that the time on the clock is 12 o'clock. Tell why Chase is wrong and make it right. So you could either write the time again, or you could use words, write words to tell me what time it is. And that would say half past 12. I helped you out there a little bit, first graders. You are welcome to copy that onto your page.